So I've got to ask you about sleep paralysis because you mentioned it so much and I think it's the one search term associated the most with your name on the internet as well. Uh yeah. now take us through that experience like could you take us to what happened to you that night? That night. Well, it was actually an early morning so I was uh, straight out of high school. I might have just graduated high school or something and I was lying in my bed. And uh, I was just lying there and I, re- I was just sleeping pretty much silently. And then I realized, my God, I'm actually awake. But, you know, um, what's happening? I can't move. I can't speak. So, you know, I started to, to, to you know, shout, you know, mom, dad, I, try- I tried to, but nothing could come out. My throat was sort of stuck. I couldn't get the words out. And yeah, there was, this was a heavy thing, you know, and then I felt like something was pressing on my chest suddenly. And, and I had this very strange, peculiar feeling of something intense evil in my my bedroom there and you know this feeling got worse and worse with every second and the choking and strangling got more and more intense and until I saw my legs being pulled up up down sort of uh as I was lying there and it was just I was like my god this is a ghost strangling me pulling my legs up and down and it felt it felt extremely real like it felt as real as this conversation that you and I are having so there was no question for me like I had an encounter a encountered a ghost here you know and so this you know I just the the next day I was just uh, enthralled by this experience and I had to sort of explore what what happened to me and for me obviously it was clearly a a supernatural event there was a ghost um, no doubt and uh, and really this got me going and and started to question uh, what sleep paralysis is and I started to then you know embark on my journeys and, and study this phenomenon. Uh, just want to give the listeners some context on sleep paralysis. I've dealt with a lot of sleep paralysis go- growing up, which kind of okay. stopped by the time I was 21. I think I got deeply into the world of health and uh, started working on my whole process of sleep. So that's my explanation to why it stopped happening to me. But right mm-hmm. up to the age of 20, 21, I'd get like sleep paralysis episodes very often, including oh. one I've spoken about on this show where it happened when I was 11. And I Mm. felt this woman sitting on top of me, choking me. I'm not able to move. My mom was sleeping next to me. So I couldn't even like reach out. I couldn't scream out at her. Uh, Mm. I was just like kind of stuck in fear. And then eventually that experience faded away. Uh, mm. and I went back to sleep but I've had these experiences growing up where I, I won't be able to move I'll see someone in my room and I think a yeah, lot of people yeah. deal with sleep paralysis in general so sir yeah, my question so. to you is if you had to explain sleep paralysis to a five-year-old but from a scientific perspective in terms of what happens in the brain very good so let me first explain uh, so I'll explain to you what sleep paralysis is in terms of the paralysis first and then let's explore the dream world a bit because it's sort of related right so sleep paralysis emerges from one of the stages of sleep called REM sleep. So each night we go through several stages of sleep. And one of these stages is called REM sleep, rapid eye movement sleep. So you're lying there and your body pretty much is paralyzed. So there's a part of the lower part of the brain. There are certain chemicals there that paralyzes your entire body. Okay. So you have that. And the reason you have that paralysis of your entire body is because your brain is clever. You have vivid life, 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 like crisp dreams during REM sleep. So all the bizarre dreams you see yourself, you know, on a moon wrestling with an alligator, then suddenly you're on Buckingham palace, having tea with the queen and everything is mixed, right? Places, people, time, it's all warped. So that experience is a REM phenomenon. So you're pretty much psychotic every night. You're going through a bizarre experience that you don't even question. You don't even question the bizarre nature of your, your dream world, right? So we have that. So that is the logical thing for your brain is to shut down the person so you don't hurt yourself or your sleeping partner. So that's why you are paralyzed during r- rapid eye movement sleep, during REM sleep, this stage of sleep, right? But occasionally, the um, perceptual part of the brain, you know, the part of the brain that has to do with perceptual awakening, you know, waking up and being mentally active, that can start becoming active even though you are paralyzed. In other words, this tells us, Ranveer, that in the brain, there are two systems. There's a system for paralysis, lower part of the brain, and then there's the system for perceptual activity, mental awareness, okay? And when these two systems go awry or decouple from each other. So one system is on, the other is off or whatever. You get this, you know, this, this, uh, this synchrony. It's almost like in the brain, there's a switch, 
an on and off switch. And when you click it, your brain paralyzes you and you start, you know, and, and if that on and off, off switch sort of gets stuck in between on and off, you sort of get, you get this dyssynchrony where you are mentally awake, but your body's still paralyzed. So this is uh, the sleep paralysis experience. And of course, we know that from, from science that, um, you know, animals can have sleep paralysis, like, you know, rats, cats, and stuff like this. So they have REM sleep, and so they can be paralyzed as well. So this is the basic phenomenology, the basic experience of sleep paralysis, uh, you know. But of ca- occasionally, of course, you can have these striking hallucinations. So, so, so basically, I just want to make this clear. You can have this basic p- paralysis and just being like, oh, my God, I'm awake. I can't move. You know, this is terrifying. And that's it. But then occasionally, about 40 percent of the time, people will report striking hallucinations of like ghosts like intruders, or as you mentioned, you, you, you saw a person, or I've even seen a copy of myself floating around. And the <laughs> conversation is usually who's the real Baland, you know, the, co- the person floating above or the person down there, you know, that there's a the debate going on. Uh, so you can have all that. And we have theories for why that your brain would, cr- you know, create these striking hallucinations. And so this is the basic uh, experience of sleep paralysis, right? So the paralysis and then the hallucinations. And the hallucination parts is much more mysterious and uh, elusive. 